Good morning, Branson Christian Church. Good morning. Oh, wow. You're a lively bunch this morning. Everybody's still up running around out there. <laughs> want to welcome everybody today, and I hope that you got a bulletin as you came in here. And if you will, there's a tear-off sheet on this side right here, and you can put prayer requests on there if you'd like for us to pray about anything. And there's also places for your uh, pertinent information, your name and address, phone numbers, emails, and contact information there. And we'd appreciate it if you'd fill those out and put those in the offering plates when they come around. And are there any visitors with us today? Raise your hand if you're a visitor. You get, we got one back there, I know. You get some good banana nut bread. It's good. It's good. There we go. All right. Welcome to our visitor. And I think we have a few announcements. Good morning. I have a couple of announcements. First, I just want to encourage everyone to participate in the upcoming talent auction, which will be October 29th. And um, if you have a talent, we all have a talent, but some people may pigeonhole that into something crafty. But you can also do things of service or just be creative. Think outside the box. Everybody can do something. So we hope that everyone will participate not only as contributing to the auction, but contributing to the auction. If you know what I mean, that means buying things. So come with your billfolds and be prepared to do that. So there will be more information in the um, newsletter that just came out, but just want everybody to plan to participate in that. Secondly, I wanted to update you on the search committee. Um, it seems like it's been a while since we've had anything to share, but we've been busy and we have filled out the congregational profile, which is an imp important document to s initiating the process. So that has been submitted to our um, regional office, and it is being submitted out uh, for those who may be searching to contact us. So we are in the waiting cycle again. <clears throat> and then I just want to say thank you to our bakers who baked our lovely breads this morning that are part of the World Communion uh, Sunday, and that's uh, Susie, Tanya, and um, why did I just lose it? Jan. <laughs> so thank you to all of the bakers, and um, that's all. Thank you. Okay, before I get started, I think we're going to do our minute for mission right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just a reminder that we are collecting for the reconciliation. I'm not going to sing Jesus Loves the Little Children again this Sunday, but I want you, I want you all to just uh, remember that this offering helps for gathering everyone, and I think it's very fitting that we have the reconciliation offering at the time that we celebrate our World Communion Sunday as well, because it's all of us working together to bring reconciliation to the world. Please give. Okay, this is this Sunday, and for the rest of the week, for Light a Candle for Children, our focus is going to be, do children have responsibilities concerning God? And well, let's just see. <clears throat> when we look at Exodus 20, 12, God has handed down the Ten Commandments. And the first four were about how to love God. The next six were about how to love each other. But the very interesting one that I found uh, was the fifth commandment, 
which is honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord is going to give you. Then in Ephesians uh, 6, 1 through 4, Ephesians, Paul says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Then in Colossians 3.20, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Then in Proverbs 1, 8 through 9, listen, my son, to your father's instructions and do not forsake your mother's teachings. They are a garland for your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Children of God, are you listening? Do you see a pattern here? You are going to be adults someday and you will have your own children And every time you can receive good instruction from godly parents and grandparents, grasp a hold and love them for caring enough to raise you up in the way you should go. You will receive a promise from God that you may have a long life on earth. God loves you that much. Let us pray. Jesus, help our children to walk in the way that is pleasing to you. Let them be strong and learn that they can take refuge in you in their hard times and their good times. Bless them, Lord. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to start the call to worship this morning with uh, some scripture. Can't get too too much scripture, I don't think. This is from Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love thy, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus spoke these words. It was in a response to a lawyer who was trying to trap him by asking him which commandment in the law was the greatest. Jesus gave those two commandments as the greatest because they actually include all the others as well. In other words, if our hearts are filled with love for God and for our neighbor, basically all of, the other, all of our other actions will follow the Christian code of conduct. Romans 13.10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And if love is the fulfilling of the law, then obeying God's commands should be easy because love is the dominant emotion in a heart where Christ is king. Holy love in our hearts will bring to our souls, Philippians says, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Jesus said that loving God with all our being is the first and great commandment, and it is a summary of the first four of the Ten Commandments. We should love God because He is our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our guide. We must love Him with a sincere love emanating from every fiber of our heart, soul, and mind. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself is the second great commandment, and it encompasses the last of the six, last six of the ten, which show us our duty to our neighbor. It is founded upon and flows from the first great commandment, where John said, He that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? And Jesus said, again, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. To say then that these two commandments are of supreme importance is a tremendous understatement. They are the foundation of everything in the Word of God. So they should be the foundation of our every thought, word, and action, the very axis upon which our hearts, minds, and souls revolve. Love. Let's stand together as we sing our first hymn this morning.
Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for all your rich blessings, for salvation, your Son Jesus that died for us, that we may spend eternity with you. Lord, we ask that you would fill our hearts with love, love for you, love for one another, love for the world. And Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit enter this place in our hearts this morning and fill us up this morning for the rest of this worship service. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing for our praise song. seated. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord, we come to you today so grateful and humble before you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We know that you care for us deeply, and we know that you want us to continue to share our lives with others and help them. We are concerned for those that have been lifted up in our bulletin as well as others that we know in our hearts need our prayers. We ask for your guidance and also help us to show our love to everyone. We thank you that you have given us a life of peace and grace and you've given us kindness and encouragement so that may, we may also show others. So when we serve you, Lord, we ask that you use us and we ask that you continue to give us your guidance in all of these things we pray. And as we continue, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today is World Communion Sunday, a day when Christian churches around the world have all agreed to celebrate communion as a sign of our oneness in Jesus Christ. 
The day is a powerful reminder of our unity in Christ, despite the differences in the church and around the world. So today we celebrate World Communion Sunday, remembering our Christian brothers and sisters around the world who also celebrate this feast. And we remember that this is our Lord's table, and all who seek Jesus are welcome. And in commemoration of World Communion Sunday, some of the ladies, as Jean mentioned, have made different varieties of bread from around the world. And we have uh, a display set up here and one out in the narthex. And you're welcome to sample those, too, after, after the service. So that'll be, that'll be very nice. And during the words of institution coming up here, Susie's going to give the words in Spanish and in French. Now let's sing our communion hymn, standing on the second verse. Ce que si je vous ai donné, c'est que le Seigneur Jésus, la nuit qu'il fut trahi, prit du pain. Et après avoir rendu grâce, il le rompit et dit Prenez, mangez. Ceci est mon corps qui est rompu pour vous. Faites ceci en mémoire de moi. De même aussi, après le souper, il prit la coupe en disant cette coupe est la nouvelle alliance en mon sang. Faites ceci toutes les fois que vous en boirez en mémoire de moi. Car toutes les fois que vous mangerez de ce pain et que vous boirez de cette coupe, vous annoncerez l'amour du Seigneur jusqu'à ce qu'il vienne. Porque yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que os he enseñado, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que fue entregado, tomó pan. Y después de dar gracias, lo partió y dijo, Esto es mi cuerpo que es para vosotros. Haced esto en memoria de mí. De la misma manera, tomó también la copa después de haber cenado. Diciendo, esta copa es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre. Haced esto cuantas veces la bebáis en memoria de mí. Porque todas las veces que comáis este pan y bebáis esta copa, la muerte del Señor proclamáis hasta que Él venga. For I have received of the Lord what I have also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, drink this, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now the prayers of the elders. Heavenly Father, we celebrate this day, World Communion Sunday, as an opportunity for Christians in every culture to share in the breaking of this bread as we remember your precious son and the price he paid at Calvary. May Christians everywhere lift up their hearts in praise, and may we never take for granted this great privilege we have as we do this remembrance of our precious Lord. <coughs> Amen. As we partake of this cup on World Communion Sunday, let us remember that no matter how different we are, we will all be always bonded by our faith. Let this cup that we share be a symbol of the call to discipleship you offer us and an emblem of your overflowing blessing to those who respond and follow your direction. Amen. Time to take up the offering now. And I recall I heard a few years back somebody say, I don't go to them churches because all they want is your money. <laughs> Always asking for your money. <laughs> and I started thinking, I thought, well, God really doesn't need our money. He owns everything anyway. Everything that was made, he made, the Bible says. So giving and the offering and, uh, is more for us than it is for God because it shows that our obedience and our love for him to give back out of the blessings that he's blessed us with. And uh, it takes some of that money to buy air conditioners, doesn't it, Johnny? <laughs> you just had to do. So give generously, and the Lord will bless you. Our deacons will now come to take up the offer.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we ask now that you take this offering and bless it, that it will meet the needs of everything that it's intended to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I read the scripture this morning, I want to say a word about this young lady over here. Most of you know who she is, Cindy Baldwin. She's the chairman, uh, chairwoman of the, the board. She's the president of the board, and she's going to be bringing the message to us this morning. But I got to say, um, I've been in church my whole life and, and uh, been around all different kinds of church people, but you're going to be hard-pressed to find a more dedicated hard-working servant than this lady right here. Our scripture reading comes from John chapter 13. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had reclined again, he said unto them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, our Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. This ends our scripture reading. Thank you, Jamie. First of all, having the choir up here sounding like a band of angels is fantastic for anyone who has to do this job, I'll tell you. <laughs> this is World Communion Sunday. And thank you, Susie, for giving us those words in French and Spanish. I could follow along a little bit with the Spanish, but I had no clue with the French. So thank you again. It's wonderful to hear other languages and to know what they are saying because uh, we're all together in this. To focus on those, the words that we had in our uh, institution, the first one was, this is my body, referred to himself as the bread of life. Now, we cannot live without bread, most of us think, but we cannot live without him spiritually. So he is our bread of life. Even in the Old Testament, I found the scripture in Psalms where it said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The second phrase, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, refers to his sacrifice for all of us, for the atonement of our sins. And commemorating the Lord's Supper then as the small groups began meeting, and even today, is a very cherished practice in our church by which we believers remember our Savior's death and celebrate our salvation and eternal life. But let's look at what else happened that night. As you heard the scripture reading, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually participated in a foot washing. I know that the first time I ever did I felt so humbled in that experience that someone would take off my shoes and wash my feet. I can imagine the reaction of the disciples. In those days, the roads were dusty and dirty, and you needed to wash your feet before you sat down at the meal. Um, and I'm sure that those disciples probably would have been most happy to wash Jesus' feet. But 
they probably wouldn't have washed each other's because they loved their master, their Lord. In fact, in the society of that time, only the lowliest of the servants would have been given that job of washing each other's feet. So Christ's actions showed us that he was teaching the disciples about selfless service through that act. Later, that lesson of selfless service was more exemplified by his suffering and his death on the cross. We know he had served his utmost. But selfless service to us today, what is that? To me, it involves several different areas in our lives. The first one is listening. And I already had this on my list before we had Bible study this last week. So <laughs> for those of you that attend Bible study. As we heard last week in Pat's uh, sermon about prayers, one of them that she focused on was a centering prayer. And that's where we just need to center on Christ and just listen to what he has to say. We're always ready to tell him what we need and what we want and all of this and take care of this and take care of that and, and that type of thing. But how many times do we go into prayer to just listen? I remember going through an exercise in this type of prayer in which we closed our eyes, we imagined ourselves sitting at the feet of Jesus, resting our head in his lap, his hand stroking our head, and just listening to him. More recently, I was reminded of that when we had Pat Davis's funeral when we all sang in the garden. Couldn't you just picture yourself walking in the garden with Jesus and talking with him? But can you imagine going and maybe he found a stone to sit upon and you sat on the ground, rested your head, and listened to what he had to say? So I think that's an important part of our selfless service is to be willing to just listen to what he has to tell us. The other thing that we need to do is we need to listen to others when they need someone to talk to. I believe the phrase that we've been taught in the last few weeks is be quick to listen and slow to speak. That's the time when we are listening, we are serving that person. We are the outlet for them to be able to talk about whatever they wish to say. I think of the times when we go calling on people in, in homes that have not been out for a while. Usually, there's quite a bit that they want to talk about. They have been so long without someone to talk to. Yes, there's texting on the phone, and there's calling on the phone, which I try to get my grandkids to do. I'd rather hear their voice than to uh, have them text me a message. But it's that time, and I remember back in the day when you went into a home and someone offered you tea. Well, look at that time that it took to make the tea. Sitting there, you could be giving your time, listening to what they wanted to talk about. It's a gift of service that I think more of us need to participate in, and I think a lot of us have become more aware of that as we've gone through the last three years with this pandemic situation. People were lonely. So listening is one way that we serve. Secondly, generosity. I know that we usually use this word with our tithing and giving, but I've always thought of it as more than that. We need to be generous with our time. Not just listening, but doing what we're led to do to be involved with others and with our church. 
I read the question in a devotion lately that said this. Am I really answering the Great Commission or am I just content to show up on Sunday morning for an hour of worship? Boom. One hour out of an entire week. Is that really tithing your time? Giving back? Answering that Great Commission, go ye therefore. It involves a lot more than the time you spend inside your church. It also raises the thought, are we just going to let the church handle whatever the problems are and we'll just go on our merry way? Or do we need to involve our time in what needs to be taken care of? After all, he asked each one of us to go and proclaim the gospel. Did he not? And aside from tithing and time, we also need to be generous with our talents. God has given us a lot of gifts that we in turn should share with others. Now one of the gifts I feel like I was given was in the area of music. I won't be a star singing or playing any musical instruments like some that we have in our congregation that do such a wonderful job. But I can share my talents when they need someone to accompany someone else or play for the service or even add another voice to a performing group. There, are, there is that gift. And I would be wrong in not using that gift that God gave me to share with others. What are your gifts that you can share with others? I know there are some fantastic fantastic people in this congregation that have the gift of hospitality. I'm sure that at a moment's notice, if a meal is needed to be taken into someone, they're at that door. There also, I have seen people who have gone to help families in time of grief, do things like mow their yard, get the, get the surroundings looking nice for all the company they're going to have. I was amazed at one time when I heard of a person who went to the house and asked if he could shine everybody's shoes for the service. Wow, is that a commitment to make, giving of themselves to do for others. There's, there are gifts of leadership. We have seen that throughout this congregation. There are so many people who have taken the bull by the horns and done something when a need has arisen. And we thank you for that. But think of your gifts. Are you doing everything you can with the gifts that you've been given? Number three, the word is encouragement. As we experience our fellowship with others, whether they are believers or unbelievers, we need to be ready to give encouragement. We need to find others who may be feeling lonely and have the courage to meet with them and listen to what they have to say. Even invite them to become a part of our church community. I always love it on Fellowship Dinner Sunday because we, we do have guests and we always invite them, come on downstairs. Don't worry that you don't have anything to give. There's always plenty to share. That's just a part, again, of the hospitality of this church and even the friendliness, I think, that we have in this church. We've also been willing to help find sources that will help people who are in need when they come. Not that we can provide everything, but we have people and organizations that we're aware of that we can maybe steer someone towards. So give some encouragement. It's always a delight, I think, when we see the children, always encouraging them in, what, in their journey with Christ. The fourth one kind of is something that we're all well aware of, what we've been involved in for the last uh, two years, is acts of kindness. Um, we've worked on it as a church. We had different ideas suggested. And we, I really feel that we have seen a huge increase of our involvement in the community here. 
we, ha- we helped get a blessing box in place, and we've been helping to fill that blessing box. We've gathered things for the crisis center. We're even helping our animal shelters, for example. The other thing I think that's been a joy is the rock painting. A year ago, some of us were involved and had such a great time with that. But what, what even happened this year during that rock painting was a woman, there was quite a rainstorm outside, and she came inside to get out of the weather. She sat down and joined us. What a delight it was to, ha- to provide for someone else besides just us. And we've, since then, one of our members has really taken to painting rocks, especially for different people, with a one word of encouragement on it. And I have really appreciated that. It's, it's a delight to see how one little project captured so many folks to go out and do and I know the rocks have been shared. There, there were still some rocks out on the table. I don't know if they're still there now in the narthex, but um, we can always use more painted rocks to pass on to someone. Put them in your neighborhood where people that walk by see them. They need words of encouragement. It's, you never know whom you might impress that day with that rock being there with a message for them. So I hope we continue our acts of kindness And I know that there are many of you that are involved in acts of kindness that we don't know about, but bless you. That is selfless giving as well and serving. Praying for others. We need to always be willing to pray for others. You know, we list some in the bulletin each week, and we know we have prayer requests that come out and we have prayer warriors that send messages to and uh, we just need to offer to pray individually with others when you are with them the other day as I sat in the doctor's office a gentleman across the way came over and said he said may I pray for you today because he knew we were in a doctor's office so yes I needed prayer and we got into quite a conversation after the prayer And he's just up the hill up here at the Nazarene Church. So I felt like it was a neighbor just being concerned. Those are things that we can do, you know. Have you you ever thought uh, about praying for that person that's driving too slow in front of you? (laughs) Especially on old Highway 165 going out to the dam. (laughs) A lot of curves. I thought to myself not long ago, you know, I need to pray for that person. You know, they're they're a little bit timid about these, you know, 30 in a 45-mile-an-hour zone. They're a little bit timid about these curves and hills. So I need to pray for them instead of blessing some of them the way I used to. I know it was wrong of me to do that, and I had to ask for forgiveness. But uh, can can I speed up? Do you want? You don't want me going fast. Yes, I can. So I think it's better to... Seriously, just to think about the prayer requests that we are given. And I hope you all take the time for those requests. And that doesn't mean when you see it one time, you do your little prayer and say, okay, got that one done. Keep them in your prayers. Continue to pray. Do whatever you can to show God's love. You'll never know the effect that you have when you do that. Basically, what we need to practice is just being others-focused. Now, these were just a few ideas of what service meant to me, and I'm certain you have many others. As I looked through the scriptures, I remembered when Jesus told Peter, how many times, feed my lambs. That didn't mean just physically feed them. It meant serve them. And just as Jamie alluded to in in the scripture that he read to start with, love one another as you love yourself. So when he said feed my lambs, didn't that mean serve someone else? Serve people. Or in Colossians 4, verse 5, he says, Make the most of every opportunity so that you and others may fully understand the mysteries of Christ, 
and what your fellowship with him may mean. We have to work faithfully and we have to work consistently to tell of the good news of God's love for all. In the last few weeks, I've heard a new song on the radio. I'm not going to sing it because I don't know all the words, but the key lines in there is, we are saved to serve and the served will be saved. It's a very catchy tune, and I, every time it comes on the radio, I just, all right, all right, that's, that's what I'm talking about. We are saved to go out and serve others. Those who have been served will be saved. Then all the people will know you are my disciples, he said, if you have love for one another. That is the fullest extent of his love. That is what we are required to do, just as he told his disciples. Amen? Amen. Good. Okay. Looks like we have an invitation at this time. You are asked to, uh, as you, we are singing, if you would like to join this, this fellowship, or if you have a prayer concern, to please come forward. And we're going to have Jamie fill in for us, I guess, over here. Okay. For our invitation hymn. So if you'll all stand, let's sing. And now, may the grace of God go with you, and may you go out and do what Jesus told you to do. Serve and love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>